Okay, welcome to Math 7. This is Unit 1, Lesson 2. Just doing some review of today's lesson and some homework help for you guys. Today's lesson was about corresponding parts and scale factors. And to begin your lesson today talking a little bit about just um, how to multiply different units and fractions, doing some mental math there. So you work with some problems just mentally looking at 1 fourth times 32. And you probably started to look at how, what is, what is 4 and 32, what do they have in common? You might have talked about, oh, I know 4 times 8 is 32. And so you're looking at how you can use different fractions or decimal numbers and what you know about your math facts to help you figure out solutions meant using mental math. From there, you move into a section on corresponding parts. And you begin with these three shapes. You begin with the three shapes, two of which certainly look like a circle, and one is more of an oval shape and you began to identify the corresponding parts from one circle to the next. So for example, you said this was point P on the original, and on the copy number one, that same point you called point F, and point two, or copy number two was point Z. And you went through and, and worked out what all these little boxes were gonna be filled in with in terms of the corresponding parts, and then you were asked questions about whether it was a scaled copy or not. And one of the things you looked at here was you were asked probably to use some patty paper to draw and trace one of the angles. Because when we're looking for a scaled uh, copy, angle measurements are essential to look at. Because you might have a shape that looks similar, but if the angles inside don't match or are not corresponding, you're gonna have a problem. So if I took this angle measurement here, O, and I put it on top of the copy number one, we could see that it does indeed match the angle measurement there. No problem, a little hard to see. I'll zoom in a little bit there for you. Ooh, that's nice and big. So you get that there, so it does match. But if I take this same angle and I try to lay it on top of copy number two, we realize that it just doesn't quite work out. And so because the angle measurements aren't the same, we decided that copy number two was not a scaled copy, but copy number one definitely was. And so you're working on that, tracing, decide what corresponding angles we're gonna look like. So with angles, we know that they have to be the same. When we moved into the next section, we looked at some series of triangles to decide if these triangles were scaled copies and what the similarities or differences were gonna be. Now for this part here, we have lengths with different measurements. For our original, which is here, we can see that we have a three, four, five triangle. And so as you looked at each triangle, you had to determine if it was a, a, a similar triangle. So for example, an A, while the three might match here to here, to go from four to six, that's not even the same. So you can't have the same number and then a different number. I already tells you something's a little bit off there. So you knew that A was not gonna be corresponding. But then you could take a look at something like a B and recognize that this one are the exact same numbers, three, four, five. So that's gonna be a similar triangle there, no problem. And you went through the whole process to figure out which triangles were the ones that were scaled copies of the original. You could have also taken some, some paper, some tracing paper here, and maybe created a duplicate copy of the triangle and slide that on top of what you have and go, hmm, not sure if that's gonna quite work out. When I look at this one, it doesn't seem to be the same. When I look here, yes, it's the same. When I look here, I recognize that while that bottom angle is 90 degrees, the other angles do not match. So we would say that's not a scaled copy. But what's interesting when you look at some other ones, like choice G, we can see that with choice G, the triangle there seems to fit almost right inside of it, doesn't it? It's just right there, almost like everything matches because that would be a, a similar triangle. F didn't work. E seemed to be a little bit larger, but very similar to what we had. We look at E there, right? And the same is true for D, where D is a little bit like G. It kind of sits nestled right inside there, proportionally there as well. And so when you were looking at those different triangle shapes, you then made a chart dealing with the different triangles. Now, because you were assigned different ones, you might have different ones in your chart than what I have here. But I noted here that B, D, E, and G were all, to me, similar triangles. And the reason for that was that when I looked at the side links, the side links had a scale factor in common. So for example, to go from, and sort of use multiplying things, multiplying things, to go from a three in my original to a three, that's a scale factor of multiplying by one. And that same scale factor continues here. Four times one is four, and five times one is five. 
So that scale factor is a multiplication factor of times one. When I looked at letter D, I noticed that, well, three becomes a three and a half. So I'm asking myself three times what number becomes three over two? So in this case, if I think about multiplying, if I'm gonna go straight across, three times one gives me three, and this becomes a fraction, and then one times a two will give me that two right there. So what I'm multiplying for my scale factor here is actually going to be times a half, because I'm multiplying it by half. And that does work everywhere. Four, or half of four, is two. So my scale factor here becomes two, or sorry, becomes a half. Something similar for E, when I look at E, to go from a four to an eight, that is times two. Well, does the same pattern follow here? Sure it does. Three times two is six, and five times two is 10. So we know we have a scale factor there of times two. For G, it was a little funnier because now you have these fractions, like is that really gonna work? But when we look back at our picture, it did look some very similar. So we figure something's probably happening there. So you could look again like we did with letter D and think, well, three times what number is gonna equal two? Well, if you're not sure about that, we can do some algebra and we could divide both sides by three and that's gonna leave us with what we don't know is equal to two thirds. And that's actually our scale factor. Our scale factor here in this case is times two thirds. Okay, and that becomes our scale factor. And you can try that out. If I take four, four times two thirds, four times two is eight, and the three stays in the bottom, and it matches there. And the same thing for G. So that's how you can tell that it's a copy and it's been scaled from the original. And that was what we did in our lesson. So the summary of the lesson then essentially is this. A figure and its scaled copy have corresponding parts. And when we say they have corresponding parts, that means their points are gonna correspond G to G. You're gonna find that there's something in common with their lengths, three to six, looks like it's a times two. And you're gonna find that their angles are gonna be the same as well. So corresponding parts means there's matching points, segments, or angles for a scaled copy. But what's important to make sure if it is a scaled copy is that scaled factor. And a scaled factor tells us here that a scale factor is gonna have lengths that have the same scale factor. This is where you're gonna multiply by something, multiply, and you can multiply by a whole number to make it bigger, or you can multiply by a fraction to make it smaller. But the key thing with this is gonna be also the angles have to be the same. And that's why we began first of all with that circle, and we looked at different angles in that circle to decide if the angles were the same. So the angles have to be the same in order for it to be the, a similar or a scaled copy. So now let's take a look today finally at your homework assignment. So with the homework assignment, it began by saying you have a shape and the second shape number here, this is the second one, is a scaled copy of the first one. So this is our first shape and this is our second shape here. Okay, and with that, it says show one pair of corresponding points and two pairs of corresponding sides. So a pair of corresponding points could be something like, we could say that this point right here corresponds to this point right there. It's the same point. In terms of the sides, you could say that this side right here, this tall length, corresponds to this length right there. You could also note, if you wanted to, that this length right here corresponds to this link right there. You can pick whichever ones you want as long as you're making the match. So I use different colors there to, to distinguish which ones were going which, which way. So what scale factor takes the original to the smaller copy? For this one, it was a little funny because if I noticed here, this goes up one, two, three, four, five units, okay, and this goes up one and a bit. A little bit strange, I don't know what that is exactly, but it's not a whole one. So I thought, I'm not gonna do that one. Let's try here. Here I have one, two, three, four, I like that. And here I have just plain old one. So in this case, for my scale factor, I'm going four times something is gonna get me to a one. And to do that, what we did before, is we said, well, something, I'm gonna have to multiply a number times four to get one. 
Well, thinking about what I know about math facts and fractions before, if I multiply a number and I have, uh, let's say, 3 over 3, 3 over 3 is equal to 1. If I have a over a, it's equal to 1. All right, so if I can get 4 over 4, that's going to be equal to 1. So to make that happen, I'm going to multiply by 1 fourth because 4 times 1 fourth, 4 times 1 fourth, will give me 4 times 1 is 4 and 1 times 4 is 4 which reduces to 1. So I end up with a 1 fourth is my scaled factor. So reducing everything by a fourth or 0.25 or 25 percent, different ways to, to look at that one there. You could also of course divide both sides by 4 and also end up with 1 fourth. Let's look at number 2. Number 2 says that figure B just making up one here is a scale copy of figure A. Let's just draw one real quick. Let's pretend that here's A and here's B. Now I don't know if it's scaled or not, we're going to pretend that it is, okay? So if these are a true scaled copy, is figure B larger than figure A? And it says all the time, and this is a must be true. It's like all the time, always, 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 must be true all the time. Figure B is larger than figure A. Hmm, well in what I just drew, it's not. So this is not always. This is kind of a sometimes answer. So in this case here, it's not always, it's sometimes. So we would say, nope. In B, figure B has the same number of edges as figure A. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Yes, that would always be true. They have to have corresponding parts. Figure B has the same perimeter. In this case, if this was a perimeter, let's say the value here, this was two, 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 and this was one, 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 one. Well, the perimeter here would be two, four, six, eight, versus one, two, three, four. Those are not the same, so we would say no. A scaled copy is not always gonna have the same perimeter. In terms of the number of angles, we would say yes. They're always gonna say our angles. We have four angles here, and we have four angles there. They have to match. And figure B has angles with the same measures as figure A. This is a definite always yes. Our angles have to be the same. Looking at number three, three says polygon B is a scaled copy of polygon A. Let's take a look at those pictures here. So what they're telling us is that these two pictures, A and B, let's do that just a tad, there we go, are scaled copies. So we don't have to worry about whether it is or isn't, they are scaled copies. Got it. So what is the scale factor from polygon A to polygon B? So to do this, what we want to look at are some corresponding parts. Here, for example, this line is 2.5, and it corresponds to this one here, which is 5. So what does it take to go from 2 to 5? That's the question. 2 times what number, or sorry, 2.5 times what number equals 5? And in this case, I might recognize that maybe I'm working with like money or something like that. I recognize it $2.50. If I have $2.50 and I have two of those, I get $5. Not sure how you want to look at it, but you could also do 2.5. We could do 2.5 um, times an unknown number equals 5. You could, if you chose to, divide both sides by 2.5, 2.5. And you end up with an answer of what we want to know is 2. And so our scale factor is times 2. It's twice as large. And that's what's happening from this copy to that copy. We're multiplying it by 2. So to find the missing links then, we look here to do 1.5 times 2. We would say 1.5 times 2 is 3. And here 2.5 times 2 again it's going to be 5. So those are our missing links. <laughs> to find the measure of each angle, well, angles all have to be the, what did we say before? The same. So that's a simple one. If this is 82, then this one is also 82 degrees. And if this one's 53, then this one is also 53 <laughs> degrees because they have to be the same. Let's wrap it up here finally with this little kind of some just some math practice here thinking again eight times what number gives me 40 knowing your math facts we would say eight times five gets you 40 watching your signs eight plus what number 
can get you to 40? Hmm, that's a different question altogether. And we would say that's gonna be 32. If you weren't sure and wanted to work that out, you could do eight plus a number, we'll call it x equals 40. We could subtract eight from both sides. This becomes zero and x equals 40 minus eight, which is 32. 21 divided by some number equals seven. Or I could think of this also as seven times a number is equal 21, doing the opposite there. So to get that worked out, we would do seven, 21 times, sorry, 21 divided by three equals seven. These are my math facts. Now 21 minus a number is gonna equal seven too. A little different there. So this one in this case, I can think backwards, seven plus what number equals 21? And in that case, it's gonna be 14. And then 21 times something equals seven. I'm gonna divide both sides by 21. And I find that, okay, that makes one. So my answer is gonna be seven over 21, which reduces to one third because there's one seven here and three there. It looks like this, seven over seven times seven times seven, because seven times three is 21. And when I do that, that becomes a one and I'm left with, well, sorry, I have one there and I have three there. So just counting up the ones and threes. So one and three, sorry about that. So one third. And that's all we have for those questions there. Hope that helps you a little bit with your homework today. Good luck on what you have coming up next.